Greetings. Welcome to The Truth You Need. This morning, I'm going to share something with you that I think will illustrate why every genuine born-again disciple of Jesus Christ should be preparing a sanctuary. What I mean by a sanctuary is that your home could be prepared as a place of refuge for families fleeing during the tribulation that is fast approaching. One of the inspirations for my plea to you today is a dream I had about some people that will need my help in the future. When I had this dream, what I saw was started, it started on this cold winter day with a young girl walking down a gravel road. She had several coats on and all mismatched, uh, some, a rag around her head. You could tell from her gait that she was exhausted, thirsty, and probably starving. Behind this little girl was a man and a woman, although I couldn't tell in the dream if they were actually her parents. They all looked dazed and in shock, like they had seen unspeakable things. In the dream, they were walking down this gravel road. They crested a small hill, and then they saw the sign of my property. The adults were fearful, but the little girl was immediately drawn to walk down the driveway. I, I, it was almost like I sensed that she felt like she had been at this place sometime in her life or that something was drawing her to this house. It was almost like there was this faint glow over the house in the yard. The little girl eventually walked up to the front porch of the yellow house while the couple stood back fearful about what was about ready to take place. She knocked on the door, but after a few seconds, she grab, literally grabbed the door handle, opened the door, and went inside, calling out, Hello, is, is anyone home? No one answered. So then I watched as she walked across the living room and into the kitchen. About that time, it was like dramatic, like a movie you've seen where the ray of sunlight suddenly peeks through the shades onto a kitchen table where she saw a large binder with a lettering that simply said, Welcome. She opened the binder, and about that time, her fellow refugees had finally gotten the courage to come inside as well, and they began reading the guide together that we had left for them. When I say we, I mean my family. They couldn't believe what they found. They were overjoyed to find that there was stored food, water filtration, a wood-burning stove for heat, medicine, and outside a garden ready to be planted. But most, of, most importantly, there were Bibles and our testimony of how the Lord led our family to prepare this place for them. And most importantly, a simple but clear explanation of the gospel and what they could expect to happen prophetically in the future. I think that many of you already are are beginning to understand about what I'm saying. You see, in the last video, I exhorted preppers, especially ones with an online presence, to make spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ their highest priority. Why? Because the world as we know it is soon going to slide into the tribulation, a time when God brings total judgment on America and the rest of the world. A world that has rejected his authority and has misled people about his son, Jesus Christ. Many religious people that I've talked to, especially ones with a worldly mindset, will deny and ridicule any biblical reference to God's wrath and judgment. But the Bible is very clear. The tribulation is a seven-year period of time in which the Antichrist is revealed rises to power, and begins an intense persecution 
of anyone that refuses the mark. So what does this have to do with prepping and the concept of sanctuary? Everything. You see, there are hundreds of millions of people who have heard the truth of the gospel, how Jesus Christ died in our place to provide a one-time, all-sufficient atoning sacrifice for our sins. Yet millions and millions have chosen not to repent and to place their faith alone in the Jesus of the Bible. Instead, there are millions of Americans and people around the world who have been inoculated with various forms of religion. What I mean by religion is lukewarm versions of Christianity that God has promised he will reject. When the rapture does take place, these people would be left behind. If you don't believe me, then read Revelation chapter 3. It's short, but and it's also as clear as day. One way or the other, someday soon, millions of everyday people will suddenly realize that the Bible wasn't referring to some nebulous allegory. They will realize that they, ins they trusted their religious traditions instead of sal the salvation provided by the Jesus of the Bible. And then they will have an all for realization. They will now have to choose between accepting the mark of the Antichrist or being killed after they become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Here's what I want every prepper to understand. Yes, we must prepare in order to protect our own families. But if you are a born-again disciple that would choose death over accepting the mark, then your preparations are much more important than you can ever realize. The reason is simple. The restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is going to be removed and the Antichrist will use this time of anarchy, delusion, and confusion to take over and the world and institute a complete government control system. And after watching governments, corporate giants, and mainstream media and their globalist Luciferian masters use this pandemic to destroy most of our remaining liberties, people aren't laughing anymore. People are beginning to get it. But you haven't seen anything yet. Because as this world empire emerges, millions of people will suddenly wake up to the dreadful reality of being caught behind enemy lines. Now, some will repent and place their faith in the Jesus of the Bible. And these people will seek out places to go that are sanctuaries of truth, provision, and protection. Remember, during the Antichrist reign, you will not be able to buy and sell unless you have the mark. And that's why these sanctuaries will be such incredibly important places. This is why every Christian and every authentic Christian church needs to be preparing now. Not only for themselves, but for the, their new brothers and sisters. And yes, those of the lost who will be desperate to find a place of safety and rest. These sanctuaries will be the place that many people will repent and turn to the Lord. And as Christians, God has commanded us to preach the gospel and help people who are in need. And when the darkness eventually covers the earth, there are going to be myriads of these people. Great opportunity for us to be obedient to the Lord's call on our lives. Now, some of you who strongly believe, and you've been, you've been taught this way, that the rapture is going to be before the tribulation, you think you don't have to prepare. I can understand that viewpoint, but let's just tell the truth. There are learned biblical scholars who have solid arguments for both a pre- and a post-tribulational snatching away of the saints. The truth, and this is what the Lord said, 
is that none of us know the day and the hour when the rapture will take place. So if you are putting off your preparations, you could be in for a very rude awakening. But if you're right, let's say you're right, and you get raptured before the tribulation. Imagine what your preparations could mean to families who are desperately seeking a sanctuary. In closing, let me make some suggestions to the three groups of people who are likely watching this video. The first group is already preparing in your home, or you've, you're preparing at a bug out location. Congratulations on your foresight, but make sure you are realistic about what will happen when the day arrives. Unless you are very far from civilization, you're going to have a lot of people who will be asking you for help. Remember this, when we focus on God's provision and not just on what our hands are prepared, the Lord can take a little and multiply it greatly. Very few people will be able to survive the tribulation. But if you focus on being obedient to the Lord, he will do miraculous things through you and for you that ultimately will result in great eternal rewards. The second group are pastors, elders, and other ministry leaders who have the power to allocate funds and work together in strategic planning. Every church whose, whose foundation is the Word of God should be buying rural farm property that can be used for emergency relocation of their members and provide sustainable food production when food and other essentials are cut off by the satanic world government. Now, honestly, I expect that most of the le these leaders who are going to hear this call will not respond with any meaningful action. They and most so-called Christian churches are in the denial phase about the trajectory our world is on. Just like many Jewish families in 1930s Germany, they will wait until it's too late. Which brings me to the final group of people who have a vision to actually do something. These are the church members who see exactly what is happening. And you have no illusions about where this is heading. To these brothers and sisters, I would say this. Begin to band together in small groups and combine your resources and your uh, abilities. Find rural locations and begin to make preparations for your group and the inevitable refugees that will show up when the event takes place. This, will, this event will be the tipping point the emergency or disaster that gives governments the reason to declare some form of martial law and institute complete governmental control. For America, I believe the signs are increasingly pointing to a surprise attack by Russia, China, and Iran that will leave our country devastated. If you think this sounds crazy, please read Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51, and then ask yourself if this does not sound like a missile attack against our nation. And of course, unless you've been living under a rock some, someplace, the reality is this. America is way behind in the race for usable hypersonic weapons, which will allow no time for warning. And that's exactly what Jeremiah 50 and 51 reveal. Or, on the other hand, what could lead to this event would be a fake, and I stress fake, alien arrival in which so-called extraterrestrials or extra-dimensional beings arrive to help humankind. The media is working overtime to condition the population with story after story about so-called alien encounters by both civilian and military personnel. Please, if you're, if you're a, a viewer like me, don't be 
fooled and don't give time to these people who talk about good and bad aliens and we've got to work with the good aliens against the bad. That is all a sham. It's all a lie straight from the pit of hell. There are no such things as aliens. There are only demonic entities and different levels of angels that are either serving God or following Satan. And if you're, if you're a, a content creator, please stop giving credibility to the whole alien story. And if you work for Fox News and you're your uh, name is Tucker Carlson, then, <laughs> Tucker, please quit showing the, the gun camera footage from the Navy F-4, the F-6, excuse me, F-18s that purportedly show these uh, alien encounters. It's obvious that we're being conditioned by increasing leaks from the government. They're, these are not leaks. They're intentional. They're getting us ready for the great reveal. Now, it's even possible that these so-called alien entities will be the ones to introduce us to the Antichrist, who will purportedly, he, he has been sent to deliver us from some extinction-level event like an asteroid impact. Or maybe you will be presented as a peacemaker after the prophesied Ezekiel 37 war takes place in which millions die. And the solution that he offers after this terrible war is a covenant with Israel and many nations of the world. Now, many of you are sitting there thinking, this is all crazy. Where does this guy come up with this? But just think for a minute. Just look at what has transpired ever since a man-made virus was unleashed on humanity just two years ago. Open your eyes before it's too late. In closing, remember the Lord's admonition in 2 Timothy. Let me bring this up. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me. And this is Paul talking, by the way, the Apostle Paul. A prisoner for his sake, but by God's power, accept your share of suffering for the gospel. He is the one who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not based on our works, but on his own purpose and grace, granted to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made visible through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus. He has broken the power of death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher. Because of this, in fact, I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed because I know the one in whom my faith is set, and I am convinced that he is able to protect what has been entrusted to me until that day. You've been entrusted with resources and the truth. What we need to do is make sure that we are being obedient to the Lord and using our resources and the Word of God to help people till the very end. Now, I know for some, some of you, you've already begun, you've already had this realization, and you're preparing. And you're preparing with the mind of Christ. That is, you are prepared to help other people. If you can, shoot me an email at info at the truth you need .com. Let me know how you're approaching this challenge. 
and bless you for what you're doing. I love you guys. Have a great day in the Lord, and we'll see you soon.